Hey, preteens. Hey, it's Cam here. Hey, with another great uh, series that we're in called, uh, which I love, the Studio 4110, which is uh, just basically talking about my fears, um, that I will not fear. I will trust God and he will strengthen me. He will uphold me with his righteous right hand, Isaiah 4110. This is a great text to, to know and to fall into and, and to, to fall in love with. And today we're going to look deeply into uh, why do people hide things? And I'm not talking about hiding money or hiding other stuff. I'm hiding about hiding secrets, um, maybe from parents or from God or from your best friends or whatever might happen where you're hiding the real you, the, the you that God only knows, the God that knows all your secrets. He knows everything inside and out with you, but you've been hiding from those. And we want to try to help you unpack and unreveal maybe some of those if you have been doing that. So let's pray and then we'll jump into our, our lesson today. God, thanks so much for each young preteen that's hearing this. Well, Father, I pray that uh, through your word, it'll be clear to them how important it is to be honest and to share and to be built up and it, especially share with you if they've been holding back some thoughts or some things that they've been doing that is, is unrighteous or wrong. God, that you will help them and see how good it is to reveal the truth and how well it is to come out. We love you in your name. Amen. Well, in this place in Africa, there's these monkeys who love coconuts. And so these warriors who used to hunt monkeys would take coconuts and they would put a little hole in the top and they would uh, make it big enough so the monkey's hand would get inside the coconut. And so the monkey would sneak up to the coconut and see the hole and go, oh, there's coconuts open. It's so good and tasty. I want to get some coconut. And they'd put their hand inside of it and they would begin to like carve and carve and try to get as much as coconut as they could. And so what they would do is get their hand in there. Once they got their hand in there, they couldn't actually get it out. And so what they would do is just try to then, once they couldn't get their hand out of one, they would go to another one and another one. And you know, eventually what would happen is that that would slow them down. And then those people, the hunters would come and get them and they would be captured. And that's what they did. But one secret that would be revealing to the monkeys if they knew this, all they would have to do is just let go and be free. That's all they had to do. Just let go and be free, and they wouldn't have to be captured. They could run away and get away from those who were hunting them. But they didn't figure that out. That isn't something they wanted to do. But if they knew that, they could. I'm not sure if you have uh, secrets or things that you're hiding, but I pray today that, that God would help you unpack this uh, text that we're going to look at and the story we're going to look at to help you share those secrets and those things that might be unhealthy to your spiritual journey and, and your life. So here we go. We're going to dive right in. This is so good. This is one thing that I think happens is people are scared of the light and they don't understand how powerful the darkness is and how it can trick us just to stay in the dark. Some of us are scared of the dark, but some of us like the dark. Some of us like dark things, which are not good for us. And that's not healthy to be that way. Here it is in Luke chapter 22, first, and I'm going to read this off my iPad, which is cool, which is Luke 22:53 b It says this, but this is your honor, okay, but this is your honor, this is your hour, and the power of darkness, Luke 22:53 b let, let, me, let me explain this a little bit. This is Jesus right before he's going to be arrested. He's in the garden, and he's with his disciples, and his disciples are are with him, and he makes this statement, what is the power of darkness? Now I want you to think about that. Try to answer with your, your mind, and maybe crack open your Bible that you got there, and Luke, look in Luke chapter 22, verse 53. And before you look at 53, start around verse 45, and we'll here in a second, but I want you to think, what is the power of darkness? Now, you might be thinking Star Wars. I know I do. The power of darkness, Dark Vader, and, and against the Princess Leia, and, and all those, and Luke Skywalker, and the good versus evil, and all that wrestling with all that. 
that, that Dark Vader's trying to convince Luke to, to come to the dark side, come to the dark side. And Luke's like, no, I'm not going to come to the dark side because I have the force. And and we could compare that so much with wrestling with the way that, that, that Jesus wrestles with Satan. And, and Jesus was praying in this garden right before he was arrested. And he told his disciples to stay and pray and watch. Now, I don't know about you, but it was late at night. And they were tired. And when I get tired and, and God asks me to spend a lot of time praying about something major, I sometimes pray and I fall asleep. So Jesus came back to him and he said, hey, wait a minute. You guys are all asleep. Why aren't you praying? Why aren't you watching? And then, then all of a sudden, this is when Judas comes. If you remember, Judas comes and he is there and he, he wrestles. And, and, and the thing is, is that he told the soldiers, it's the one who I kiss, who I betray. So he goes and he kisses Jesus, right? His, they're going to then arrest Jesus. Peter takes out his sword, cuts off the ear of the soldier. Jesus gets down, does one of his miracles, picks up the ear, puts it on the soldier. He's healed. Then Jesus is arrested and taken away. But right before Jesus is taken away, he says this, he says this in, in Luke chapter 22, 53. But this is your hour, the hour of darkness. So what is he saying with that statement? Over in John, this is kind of cool to help reveal this to us. In John chapter 3, verse 19 through 20, it says this. Here's the judgment. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of the light. But people loved darkness instead of the light. They loved darkness because, they, because of what they did was evil. Everyone who does evil hates light. They will not come into the light. They are afraid of what they do will be seen. Wow. What they will do will be seen because they're trapped into their darkness. They don't realize if they did reveal what was going on in the real them, then God would like condemn them or there would be judgment and it would be horrible. I'm here to tell you the most important thing to do is sometimes confess your sins to one another. That's what the Bible teaches in James. Confess your sins to one another, and you will be lifted up. You will be, and you'll draw closer together. So, boys and girls, think of this: What is the power of darkness? What is it? What does it reveal to us? What do we see? The power of darkness. Light is scary to those who live in darkness. It's almost like a like darkness can be real attractive at times, but then coming to the light is scary for them. Light gives freedom. It really does. When you give give in to the light and you follow the light and don't let the darkness pull you in, the sin that separates us from God so much, the sin that causes pain and frustration and all those things. So here it comes down to our verse. So it says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not fear. God is with you. He'll be with you. Isaiah 41 10. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. Okay. I will strengthen you and help you. And then it gets even better. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He does that for us. And we've been studying all about that this month. We've been studying about how God can strengthen you, how God will be with you, and how he'll help you through any fear that you face. So the fear might be for you is to confess the things that maybe you've been doing that have been unrighteous or wrong and confess them maybe to your mom or to your dad or to one of our leaders in our splash manager ministry, just trying to say, hey, I've not been doing what God's really wanted me to do and be. Peter, you guys remember him, he's one of Jesus' followers, one of Jesus' disciples, and they're out on the boat, if you remember, and the, the waves are coming, and, and this is in Matthew 14, and Peter saw the wind and the rain, and he was out of the boat, but here comes the wind and the rain, and he's got his eyes on Jesus, He's super focused and he's doing great. He's like, yeah, here I come. Jesus, I trust you. I'm going to step out on faith. And he steps out of the water. He begins to walk on the water. But then all of a sudden the wind and the rain and everything around him takes his eyes off Jesus. And what happens? Let's read. Matthew 14, 30. But when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid. And he began to sink and he cried out to the Lord, save me. Greatest words in all the Bible, Lord, save me. Maybe today, where you're at, where God's got you, maybe you need to pray that God will save you from some of your darkness. 
Maybe some of your lies. Maybe some of your cheating. Maybe some of your stealing. Maybe some of the ways in which you've been talking to your friends or your parents. That's dark. That's just not healthy for you and your relationship with God. And you need to cry to him to have him help you. The whole verse in Isaiah 41.10, I pray that you've been memorizing. It says, so do not fear, I am with you. There you go. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. That's awesome. And help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is going to do that for you when you confess and when you spend time talking to him and when you fall deeply more in love with him. He's going to help you through any struggle and anything that you face. Well, we got a young man who's going to share a testimony of just about what he went through and what he faced today. Hi, my name is Travis. Uh, I'm 22 years old, uh, getting married in a month to a very, very, very beautiful young lady named Shania. Um, some things about me, you know, uh, I love, I love video games. I love computers in general. Uh, I started building computers in high school when I finally had some money and I was into computers even way before that, uh, especially in fourth and fifth grade. Now in fourth and fifth grade I started looking at some stuff on the internet I, I probably shouldn't have been looking at. Um, I was spending a lot of time on my computer and I think I just came across it one day but after that it became something that I regularly did. I hid it from the people that were important to me for a very long time and it really damaged me. Um, eventually I did bring it forward to my parents and my pastors. I got much better about telling them when I was struggling and that helped me heal, but I wish I had done it sooner. I wish I had done it when I first started because it wouldn't have been such a struggle. It wouldn't have been something that I struggled with today. Whatever you're struggling with, whether it be looking at stuff on computers or, you know, cheating at school or whatever, it's very important to bring it to your parents or pastor or a teacher. It might feel like that it's the worst idea in the world. I've been there. I was there. All I wanted to do was hide it from everybody. But I tell you what, the best thing for me was going and telling my parents and telling my pastors. And having them help me through it is what's helping me heal uh, today, helping me become a better person. Wow, that was great testimony. That really just landed home. It's real important, boys and girls, that we realize that God wants us to be in the light. A light is almost described in Matthew. It talks about like being like a city on a hill. That's You could see it signs, a light that shines bright like a city on a hill where everyone could see it. And that's the way your life should be and my life should be. We should live like nobody else where we see a light that glorifies God and gives Him the glory. And His light should shine so brightly in your life that no one can put it out. Boys and girls, that's the challenge. The challenge today is to not live in darkness no more and, and not to fear coming out and confessing that you've struggled with something that's been sinful. I think God takes that and what he does is he, he listens to it and he, he loves when you honor him in that and when, he, when you try your best to confess your sins. It's, it's so important. For if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. That's what it says. God will uphold you because he is with you and he forgives you and he loves you and he cares so much for you. I pray that you understand that. His care and value for you is through the roof. It is out of this world. It is different than anything else. And God does not want you to live in darkness but he wants you to live in the light. So boys and girls, let's go back to that statement that we talked about. What is darkness? What is the power of darkness to you and maybe to me today? I pray that we'll just kind of evaluate that, we'll look at that, and that we'll make it right with our maker, our God. Let's pray, and then we'll wrap up with a devotional. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for blessing us with each other and blessing us with um, just a chance that we had to learn about what it means to, to get out of the dark and, and get into the light and follow you and trust you. I pray we'll be like that city on a hill, shining bright and beautiful and amazing so that other people will see 
you be glorified through us. I pray we're not living in the dark. I pray we're not doing things that we shouldn't do or acting in ways that we think we might should act or do the things in which we should be doing. But we should be doing the things, God, that you want us to do and living through um, understanding your word better and helping it guide our lives. But if we are living in the dark, I pray we can confess it and just give it to you. We love you. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, so we're going to take some time and do a little devotional together. If you need to go grab your mom or dad, that'd be great. And if you guys could go ahead and print off the devotional, which is great because we talked about today Isaiah 41.10. We've been talking about that all month in our preteen ministry and want to jump into the text. So if you guys want to read out loud together and then pause this video, Luke 22.45-53. through 53. Uh, you know, what happened when Jesus asked the disciples to pray? What, what did they do? Uh, maybe ask that question. And then what did Jesus say to the priest when they came to arrest him? Why did they come at night? Kind of interesting. Because we talked about day and uh, night, darkness and light, and what the difference is. And, and this hour is of darkness and the power of darkness and where that comes from and what that means. I think that's pretty key and that's pretty huge for sure. Um, to talk about. So then you can answer this question, what is the power of darkness? What is that? We talked a little bit about that, but write that down. You know, it's sometimes better just to write things down and, and to help you understand a little better. And then read Matthew 14, 30. Why did Peter begin to sink? What did Jesus do? So when Peter was out of the boat in the water and the storm was coming, what what did he do? And I pray we do this as well and cried out to God. So that's pretty good. What does God say? So we're going to read Isaiah 41.10. What does this verse say to you? Okay, so write that down, what it says to you. What does Isaiah 41.10 say to you and say to your heart to help you through whatever? And then what do you think? What is the power of darkness? Why do we hide our sins? Why do we hide something? Is it because someone's going to find out who we really are or what's going on there? So think of that one. Why, why can't it be scary to share our sins with others? Risk of they don't like you, risk they won't forgive you, risk they won't like you at all. Uh, it could be some of that. So look at that as well. Why is it important to share with others? That's key. Answer that question. What are some of the ways you can fight against darkness? Okay, ways you can fight against darkness. Let me help you with one. Is diligently be in God's word diligently study God's word and understand it. That's pretty big. And there's uh, someone in your life that you can share some of your fears and sins with. There is there someone in your life that you can actually share with and be with, okay? There is someone in your life, I'm sure right now, that's super important. And why is that important to share your sins with those people? I think that's so key and so huge, okay? Here comes a challenge. Find someone to talk to about your sin in your life don't let the darkness keep you afraid, okay? Don't let the darkness keep you afraid. Very important, boys and girls, that you do that. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this devotional segment. These are new things we're trying to get feedback on and trying to understand to do online with you. But we really want you to just think more deeply, more intently about what you just learned from the large group lesson. So make sure you keep focused on that. That'll be great. Hope to see you guys soon. I know church and, and Everything's kind of crazy right now, but keep coming, those who are coming, and, and we'll see the ones who are viewing online when you, you get a chance and when you feel safe to come back to be with us. Love you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.